Dear colleagues, welcome to my hospital at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is an intumescent cataract with a very hard nucleus. Let us observe the surgical steps. This is the main incision. It's a mid-limbal incision. This is a paracentesis on the right side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away. And this is an air bubble. I want to stain the anterior capsule of this cataractus lens with tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble. Here goes the tripan blue dye. If you stain underneath an air bubble, staining is immediate because the dye doesn't get diluted by aqueous. And now the dye is washed out. And now 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected into the anterior chamber. Yes, it is HPMC and sodium hyaluronate is not being used in this surgery. And now this is another side port about 2 o'clock hours away from the main incision on the left side. So the right side port is about 3 o'clock hours away and the left one is about 2 o'clock hours away. And now see what happens. As soon as the anterior capsule is incised, some turbid fluid comes out. Indicates high intralenticular pressure. Whenever I face this situation, I always do a small rexis first. And since this is a continuous curvilinear mini rexis, this can tolerate some amount of stress and I can safely remove some cortical matter through this small opening. Since this is an intumescent cataract, the nucleus is already rotating. And now 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected again. And now is the time to enlarge this mini rexis into an optimum size stone. I take a vana scissor in my right hand, make a small nick at around 8 o'clock. And now I hold this capsule tag with the iterator forceps. A very thin, very nice iterator forceps. And I enlarge this rexis into an optimum sized one. At this time, since there is no tendency of the capsule to go to periphery, I can make a fairly round rexis. And you can probably compare this rexis with a femtorexis. And now, visco is injected again. And now is the time to manage the nucleus. See, the nucleus is very hard, looks brown, and Nuclear sclerosis is probably grade 5. And here goes my technique. I call it submarine chop. Push the nucleus little down with the chopper and go into the substance of the nucleus just in front of the main incision. Travel through the substance of the nucleus like a submarine. Go near the opposite equator and of the nucleus like this. So the movement of the phaco teeth through the substance of the nucleus already makes a crack in its passes and it is very easy to chop the nucleus into fragments. And this is a very small chopper. I can support the nucleus very much, very nicely with this small chopper. That's it. The nucleus, the large nucleus has been divided into four fragments. Now I tilt each fragment and attack each fragment from its apex. Each nuclear fragment is triangular and I start emulsifying from the apex. There is at least a theoretical possibility that if this sharp apex rests on a point 
of the posterior capsule the posterior capsule may rupture and now this is the last piece and we must be very much cautious at this time remove the chopper make the chamber more stable because the leakage from the side port will stop and now very slowly and when the chamber is very stable remove the last portion of the nucleus inject some viscoelastic substance and uh, now is the time to manage the cortex this is a 23 gauze simco cannula attached to a 10 cc glass syringe and it works very well in my hands you can use bimanual irrigation aspiration or coaxial irrigation aspiration for cortical removal I can see that the posterior capsule is clean but some more cortical matter is there in the superior aspect just underneath the main incision that is at around 12 o'clock 11 o'clock that's it the cortical cleanup has been done nicely and now is the time to implant an intraocular lens in this case a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens has been selected because the patient belongs to our free service category and we cannot afford to give hydrophobic intraocular lenses in this category of patients and now you can see that the lens has been nicely placed in the capsular bag and a rim of anterior capsule is overlapping the optic so though the rexis is quite large it is not 6 millimeter it may be 5.75 or 5.5 millimeter now the side ports are hydrated a little bit of moxifloxacin is injected into the anterior chamber and after this the final lavage of the anterior chamber is done by BSS and then the chamber is formed and the case is concluded thank you very much for watching hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon be better and do better